Baker Mayfield sounds off on Brent Venables and the Sooners on tonight's episode of Locked On Sooners, where he says, nobody panic. You are Locked On Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome in. It is Locked On Sooners, your team every single day right here. I'm your host, Josh Elmer, on Locked On Sooners, and of course, 94-7, the ref, the home of Sooner fans. Tonight's episode brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. That's fanduel.com backslash locked on. Our man, Sooner favorite, superhero, Heisman statue, number one overall draft pick, and uh, current Tampa Bay Buccaneer himself, Baker Mayfield was back in town last week for his uh, pro camp series out at the uh, intramural fields at Oklahoma, where, uh, as Baker Mayfield would tell it this past week, he, like every other year, was uh, having more fun than the campers themselves. Uh, Baker Mayfield making the media rounds afterwards and uh, had a lot to say on a number of different topics, Oklahoma football related, uh, as you might suspect. Uh, Baker Mayfield, very, very positive of what's going on quarterback room-wise for Oklahoma. Here's the uh, the quote from Baker Mayfield talking about if uh, he had spoken to Dylan Gabriel or Jackson Arnold. He said, uh, quote, haven't gotten to talk to Jackson Ar- Arnold yet. I met Dylan. Dylan's a great guy, just his leadership qualities, everything he's about. He's got a great head on his shoulders. Competition brings out the best in everybody. Everybody is always waiting for the next thing. Jackson is going to be a stud, no doubt about that. There was a lot of turnover and change last year, and I thought Dylan handled it completely the right way. So a ringing endorsement from Baker Mayfield there, end quote, on each of the the quarterbacks here, primary quarterbacks for Oklahoma in that, that room. Dylan Gabriel, he says, got a – Quarterback in Norman, Oklahoma, very, very talented, good head on his shoulders, and uh, handled everything, the transition from, well, him, for himself, right? You know, at one point in time, Dylan Gabriel, we thought, initially was uh, was going to be on his way to UCLA from UCF, and then uh, obviously uh, the, the dominoes that fell at Oklahoma with uh, one Caleb Williams transferring out and then Spencer Rattler transferring out. That meant that uh, Dylan Gabriel and, of course, uh, y- your head coach before all of that and Lincoln Riley shifting over to USC, that opened the door for Jeff Levy to arrive here and to pave the way for Dylan Gabriel to be a natural fit instead of at UCLA, as the famous story goes. He was about to take that course, and if he had taken uh, you know, stepped foot and had actually taken part in the course, and there would have been no uh, no path to Oklahoma anymore. He would have been officially locked up and enrolled at UCLA instead for Dylan Gabriel. Well, he, he does find his way to reconvening with Jeff Levy at Oklahoma. The stamp of approval for one uh, from one Baker Mayfield for Dylan Gabriel. He also, as you would expect, positive of Brent Venables. He's not hitting the uh, panic button, as it were, for Oklahoma. He says, quote, Everybody, I think, hit the little panic button. Talking about Oklahoma and Brent Venables uh, after six and seven season in year one. He goes on, quote, with how much change there was and overturn, it's hard to have success. I think he did great in year one with all the change. And I think there's I think there's only great things to come. He's an unbelievable guy, not just a coach. He's an unbelievable man, and he knows how to lead. This program is always going to be great, end quote, Mayfield uh, of Brent Venables. And – Not that it's any sort of surprising that Baker Mayfield would be positive about uh, each of the two quarterbacks in Norman, as I think he should be. Five-star signee in Jackson Arnold. UI, everybody else is excited for what's going to happen ahead with Jackson Arnold. I've been singing the praises all along of Dylan Gabriel. I know that uh, obviously key spots for Dylan Gabriel needs to be better. Uh, some third down situations, accuracy just in general at times, left a little bit to be desired, though. I would argue the the Cheez-It Bowl, we started to see sort of things coming together for Dylan Gabriel. I mean, I think that that's that's what you can expect from Dylan Gabriel when when things go well. 
that uh, you can go toe to toe with the best in the nation. There's some that feel that that's who Florida State's going to be in this 2023 season. And offensively, you're going to hang. You're going to go toe to toe with those guys, make plays, be explosive. So I, I think you've got that with Dylan Gabriel. I, I think you've got a very, very reliable quarterback in the Big 12 Conference in uh, Gabriel, someone that, to me, is going to have you in position to go win this league and potentially go to the college football playoff. And Baker Mayfield feels like Oklahoma's got that guy in, in Dylan Gabriel. And then just in general, again, not surprising that Mayfield would, uh, if you want to call it towing the company line, I take it at face value with Baker Mayfield. Again, he's not going to come out and blast Brent Venables, but I think he means what he says when uh, he, he feels that Brent Venables and company handled the turnover, handled the transition, and uh, handled it well, and that he believes that Brent Venables is the right guy for this job and that uh, he knows how to lead Oklahoma. And what Baker said, which is very uh, Bob Stoops-ish, this program is always going to be great, end quote. So whether, you know, with the tip of the cap, 2-1 Brent Venables and the full stamp of approval from Baker Mayfield, the endorsement from Baker Mayfield, uh, Baker is somebody that is, of course, synonymous forever in his future with the University of Oklahoma and turning this thing around when after 2014 it looked like maybe things were, were dipping in a not so great direction. And, and lo and behold, Baker Mayfield is the guy that comes in, flips a switch and has Oklahoma winning Big 12 championships and uh, going to college football playoffs. And in 2017, there's many folks out there that, that, yeah, that feel like that's one of the ones that got away from Oklahoma. So Baker Mayfield understands that even when it looks like things are turning sour at OU, this, this program, like a Bob Stoops, right, is bigger than any one person. Baker Mayfield uh, included in that. Brent Venables, you name it, included in that. But that being said, he's still obviously very, very much a believer in Brent Venables and Oklahoma. You know what else he's a believer in? Oklahoma's move to the SEC, which, again, we've spent so much time over the weeks, months, these last couple of years now talking about this move to the SEC and how it's going to position Oklahoma for names like we're about to talk about here coming up in, in just a moment on Locked On Sooners. But Baker Mayfield says, hey, the move to the SEC, yeah, absolutely this is the right move for Oklahoma. Quote, I'm excited about it. I think it was kind of inevitable about the fact that it's going to turn into four super conferences. I think it's the best move for OU to go to the SEC. Obviously, it will be a learning curve. I think recruiting-wise and everything else, I think it will help us out in the long run, especially with how competitive Venables is. It will help us. We'll get some big boys up front, and on the defensive line, it will definitely help us. End quote. That's Baker Mayfield, ladies and gentlemen, telling you and me and the rest of the world that, uh, yeah, Oklahoma is going to be just fine in the SEC. And in fact, this move to the SEC, it's going to only benefit the University of Oklahoma in some of these key recruiting wars that Oklahoma's lost over the past uh, decade or so. Now that little trump card of the SEC, it, it's not there for anybody to play over Oklahoma. Oklahoma's about to have that same trump card. And you know what? It, even if it's not just... Somebody else has that card to play on the table, a, a Georgia and Alabama, you name it. You, you know the characters, LSU, Florida, whoever, whichever schools you want to pick out of the, the SEC that have been getting high-profile four-star, five-star defensive talent and have been saying over the last however many years, really? You want to go play in the Big 12 Conference? You want to go play for Oklahoma where they've not been playing great defense? Even if you you don't want to get on board with with that being a legitimate factor for Oklahoma. And I, I think it is. I think it's been a big-time negative recruitment factor for Oklahoma over the last however many years uh, you want to pick since the SEC started knocking off national championships left and right. Even if it's just Oklahoma has to get in there and see these teams on a regular basis, I think uh, your man right there, Mr. Baker Mayfield, is telling you just that that this is a good move for Oklahoma, even from that standpoint. He gets it. On the recruiting side, it's going to help Oklahoma, but even just in general, 
to get uh, in that same league with those types of forces that have been the big roadblocks to Oklahoma finding number eight. Trust. Trust in Baker Mayfield. Trust that he knows uh, that, yes, this is, in fact, this is what uh, Oklahoma needs. They they need this jump to the SEC to uh, to go toe-to-toe with all of these folks. So interesting. Baker Mayfield, always a character, always great to have him back in Norman, Oklahoma, and uh, getting to hear him a little bit on the radio side with us on the ref was tremendous last week. And truly, Baker Mayfield, yeah, uh, having uh, as much fun as anybody out there at the Baker Mayfield camp, uh, probably as much or more than any of the campers. And it sounded like, listening to Baker last week, that and he should be right. There's some legitimate weapons in Tampa Bay. I'm really excited for Baker Mayfield to see what 2023 has in store for him just in terms of his NFL career. Uh, He's somebody that, uh, you know, has from being the number one overall draft pick uh, revolving door, it seemed like, you know, all throughout his tenure up in Cleveland. And then you sort of get cast aside For Deshaun Watson, we don't need to spend a ton of time, I don't think, rehashing a bunch of the details of that story. Get a little bit of a breath of fresh air last season. I think uh, even just that comeback win with the Rams versus the Raiders, let's see if that's not a little bit of a turning point, uh, turning point, excuse me, in the professional career for Baker Mayfield. And I'm curious to see how this Tampa Bay situation works out for him because, again, Uh, there's a a belief out there. Okay. Post Tom Brady, how's this uh, franchise going to keep winning? Maybe, maybe Baker Mayfield's found uh, himself the spot to sort of turn things around professionally. I'm certainly, certainly rooting for that for Baker Mayfield, just like we're rooting for big time turnaround in Norman, Oklahoma. I'm rooting for uh, Baker Mayfield to find his footing as a, as it were, or refine it because he's played some good football at times in the national football league, but to get back to being a legitimate bona fide starting quarterback in the national football league that's successful. And I think Tampa Bay, maybe just maybe that's the opportunity that uh, he's been looking for, for that Williams would a full court press, Oklahoma trying to make said full court press. Uh, We'll tell you about that in just a moment here, but not before I tell you about FanDuel Sportsbook. Take your first swing at betting Major League Baseball on FanDuel. Get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose, that's 200 you can spend betting on everything from the money line to over under to who you think's uh, going to hit that first home run, you name it. All on the FanDuel app that's safe, secure, super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly everybody loves that there's no better place to bet on major league baseball than fanduel that's america's number one sports book so sign on up today visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get up to 200 dollars in bonus bets fanduel.com slash locked on fanduel an official partner of major league baseball so uh, a little full court press out there as it were from oklahoma what uh, what exactly does that mean? What do you say, full court press? Well, how about I give you one Grayson Halton, who uh, took to social media to let his feelings be known on one Williams Winery, a big time target. You folks uh, know the story by now. Five star plus. What does uh, five star plus mean? Well, that means that Williams Winery, the Lee's Summit North product, who uh, hey. Uh, explosive off the edge. Uh, I would describe him as agile, a, a slippery pass rusher. I think that's a, a good term for Williams one I mean, he's got all sorts of uh, pass rushing tools already in his toolbox, but you flip on the tape and he just finds a way, even as everybody knows, like, wait a second, we can't let this guy single-handedly beat us. Williams one He has a way to just, uh, just with that agile, those agile movements, his athleticism, he's, he's slippery. He finds a way to just kind of, uh, you know, needle his way around would-be blockers. He's, uh, he's got the bull rush. He's got a lengthy wingspan, which I think uh, really helps him in his pass rush. So, hey, you know the drill. Williams Winery, he's a star in the making. I think he's an NFL talent, no doubt. And uh, obviously, Grayson Halton here. Here's, there's your quote, right? We want this one on social media, he tweets. Uh, Grayson Halton, current Sooner, of course. He, uh, he tweets, we want this one. Time to come home 
at Winery Williams. Sooner Nation, show him some love. Let him know where home is. Hashtag Boomer. And uh, that thing was making the rounds on social media. So <laughs> there's uh, a lot of Oklahoma fans that have uh, certainly, as we've entered this dead period, right? So this is uh, no unofficial visits at this point in July. No official visits at this point in July. Limited contact with recruits. This is uh, Oklahoma's way. This is Grayson Halton's way to say, yes, Williams Winery, still a big time, massive priority for us, for this program. And we can't let Williams Winery get out of our sights. Winery, by the way, in case you've forgotten, uh, massive visits month for him last month in June. Remember, uh, obviously, came the week before the Champion Barbecue. So that was a little bit of a storyline there. Was it good? Was it bad? I think it wound up playing out all right for Oklahoma that he came the uh, the week before the champion barbecue, but it was Georgia, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Missouri, those official visits in succession. And remember, he's got that Oregon date coming up uh, in September, assuming that things don't change between now and then. And uh, well, let's hope they do, right? Let's hope that there's good news for Oklahoma and all of a sudden he shuts it down and makes an announcement that he's committing to Oklahoma before September 23rd. But assuming that things go according to the plan that has been laid out for Williams Winery, September 23rd, official visit to Oregon. And uh, that's when the Ducks probably more than likely going to be laying a smackdown on uh, Deion Sanders and company of the Colorado Buffaloes. But the uh, Kansas City product, Lee Summit North product, who is, uh, again, a five-star plus, Five star across the board by everybody. 24 7 sports rivals on three ESPN. Oklahoma, courtesy of Grace and Halton, letting their feelings be known that yes, Sooner Nation, get involved, get active on social media, and uh, show the love. Show the love to Williams Winery that this is somebody that Oklahoma wants to get, needs to get in this class. And we've said it ad nauseum. Winery, David Stone, uh, in particular, those two going to go a long way in determining how this class for Oklahoma is judged, whether it's successful or whether uh, it's, you know, even if uh, you finish with the top 10 class with whatever the other parts around that would look like, or top 15 class, uh, whatever the other parts would look like minus a Winery minus a stone, there's going to be, yeah, that faction of fans out there that say hmm, a failure in this class because uh, you didn't get those two, but uh, Grayson Halton trying his best to make sure that uh, that's not going to be a possibility for Oklahoma or not an end result for Oklahoma that the Sooners are going to wind up with Williams Winery, which uh, speaking of Grayson Halton, the uh, the exchange out there in case you missed it as well between uh, Miguel Chavis and uh, Grayson Halton, I thought was uh, pretty fun this weekend as well. Miguel Chavis, I mean, how do you not want to come play for this guy? He, uh, Grayson Halton was showcasing on uh, this tweet, if you're watching with us on YouTube, if you're listening along, anywhere you consume your podcast to uh, Locked On Sooners every single day where we're bringing you coverage of your team. Halton tweeted out, hashtag Smitty Built, came in at 260. I'm now weighing 290. Thanks to Schmitty and our nutrition. A lot of work to do, only a boomer. And uh, Coach Miguel Chavis quote tweets it and says, I remember watching your high school tape for the first time the day I got hired at OU. I remember our first convo. I remember finally meeting you and the fam. I've had a front row seat to your progress from day one. What's crazy? You're just getting started. Hashtag feed the focus. And uh, he had something else, but uh, I didn't uh, hit the show more button there for you. But Miguel Chavis, man, I mean, how do you not want to come play for that guy? Just seems like such a player's coach. I saw the uh, tweet making the rounds from this weekend as well from J.R. Sandlin of what Miguel Chavis and Todd Bates sitting in there in press and plow, which is uh, a Norman breakfast uh, and brunch staple, if you're not familiar. And they're putting the uh, recruiting hats on, sending the recruiting tape out. That's uh, that's pretty cool with Miguel Chavis. Just seems like such a, such a coach that you'd want to come play for, Todd Bates too. So we'll see, see how they're going to close on these guys. A couple other recruiting notes before uh, we share a little basketball news uh, with you in closing uh, some dates to keep an eye on or dates that we've been watching on the recruiting sphere three-star safety defensive back Justin Denson we thought there was going to be a decision on July 1st 
And uh, I guess his mom had some sort of travel problems with the rental vehicle, if I followed that story correctly. And anyways, the uh, July 1st announcement didn't happen on July 1st. So I think they're rescheduling that. But sounds like, unfortunately, that's not a recruitment that's trending Oklahoma's direction. It seems like most of the momentum there is Michigan State. Uh, an offensive tackle we've been following. July 8th decision for Marcus Easley. Sounds like trending Georgia for the four-star offensive tackle. Devon Mitchell, uh, Oklahoma, we think, has been leading for a long, long portion of this recruitment. I still think Oklahoma's leading here, and, and for good reason. You've got the built-in Michael Hawkins relationship there where the two played at Allen, and uh, obviously uh, Michael Hawkins, a part of this 2024 class. Remember Mitchell, the five-star tight end. We've spent a lot of time talking about, okay, well, is he going to reclassify or will he wind up? remaining in the 2025 class well either way that relationship to michael hawkins it's there it favors oklahoma it's strong the quarterbacks that are going to be at oklahoma that to me is uh, obviously that's a strong pull whether uh, it's hawkins that we're talking about or arnold that we're talking about or sperry that that we're talking about for oklahoma and then you know a couple of the names that are in the mix here miami alabama those are the two that are really charging on for Devon Mitchell. And Miami likes to, uh, and deservedly so, right? For good reason, Miami feels it's tight end you. But uh, Oklahoma's got a nice little tight end history here of late to, uh, to uh, attach its name to as well. You just think about Mark Andrews in recent memory. I still give Oklahoma a little bit of credit, right, for Grant Calcaterra, his uh, career starting out here, and he's – you know, made it to the National Football League. We'll see about Austin Stogner this season. And, of course, this coaching staff, what they've done with Braden Willis. So what Oklahoma's done with tight ends, that should make them an attractive destination. The quarterbacks, again, that are going to be here and the Michael Hawkins relationship, I think helps Oklahoma out with Devon Mitchell. But, again, there are some folks that feel like Miami and Alabama have seriously – seriously close the advantage uh, on Oklahoma here. I don't think we have, we don't have a commitment date in place uh, for Devon Mitchell or Dewey on July 8th, but uh, at any rate, Oklahoma very much in the mix there. We still think the leader, how about Casey Poe? Uh, big interior offensive line target for Oklahoma, July 12th. That commitment date was just put down and Casey Poe, unfortunately, again, that's someone that uh, took a bunch of visits throughout June and uh, actually dating back, I guess, to uh, middle May, went to official visits to Georgia, to Clemson, to Texas Tech, to Auburn, to Alabama. And uh, now July 12th is the commitment date, which to me says you didn't get the official visit, even though Poe's been to Oklahoma a lot as a Texas kid. I don't think that that necessarily bodes well. And a lot of folks feel like uh, Alabama is the, the favorite in that recruitment. Uh, good news, right? They can't just give you all this. Well, wait a second. Everybody's trending away from Oklahoma here. Uh, Michael Patterson McDonald, his, uh, his final four was announced. Uh, Oklahoma alongside uh, the other three in that final four. And we've got the commitment date set for Michael Patterson McDonald. And that will be coming up on July 31st. So the cut has been made for Michael Patterson McDonald. That's a safety out of Westmore in case uh, you're curious or you've forgotten. Missouri, Houston, UNLV. Those uh, those the other schools for Michael Patterson McDonald. And again, his commitment date, July 31st. I think that one that one's going Oklahoma's direction. We feel pretty strong about that. And remember, Xavier Robinson he's got a relationship with Michael Patterson McDonald. And that was one of the first two names that he mentioned when he committed the other day, uh, last week to Oklahoma, there were two names that he had uh, at the top of his list to, Hey, I'm going to make some phone calls and see if I can't get them in this class. And it was David stone and it was Michael Patterson McDonald. So I think that bodes well for Oklahoma there. A little basketball news, a little basketball news as we head down the home stretch here of this edition of Locked On Sooners, your team every single day right here on the Locked On Network. How about Austin Reeves? Just real quickly, there is a hoops hire to discuss, but Austin Reeves, my friends, got the money bag. He got paid four years, $56 million deal for Austin Reeves. Definitely uh, did not necessarily see that one 
coming uh, as recently as three months ago, but the playoff push that Reeves went on and he had a good season, uh, you know, a really good season. I think he averaged 13 points per game, the entirety of the season, but uh, 16.9 points per game in the 16 playoff games that the Lakers played in route to the Western conference finals, 4.6 assists per game throughout that playoff run, 4.4 boards. And Oh, by the way, again, four years, $56 million. And he's got the, uh, what they call the early bird max contract. That's uh, that's what the Lakers went ahead and doled out to Austin Reeves. So congratulations, Austin Reeves, my man. Uh, what's your first big uh, purchase with this this new deal? Got to reward yourself somehow, right? Obviously invest, invest, make some smart financial decisions. I'm sure that he's got uh, the right people in his ear telling him that. But, hey, you got $56 million you signed for. I think you can get at least one big purchase uh, immediately. So uh, as they say in Parks and Rec, treat yourself. Okay, so Oklahoma hoops uh, higher on the way out the door. We know, obviously, uh, you know, massive season coming up for Sooner basketball and for Porter Moser. The uh, additions that Oklahoma has had in this class or in this offseason, you know, we're hoping that these we're hoping that these are legitimate difference makers for Oklahoma, but uh, they also had some staff some staff spots that they could fill and they've added Brock Morris to the coaching staff to be the director of player personnel, as well as one of the assistant coaches. Here's what uh, I will, I will dub the Morris file. Okay. Here's, here's your Brock Morris file for you. And it's impressive. It's impressive. This is what, you know, really you want aided in the development of seven All-Americans, 26 All-Conference honorees, 18 All-Tournament selections, three Conference Player of the Years, and one NBA lottery pick. That was uh, Alfred Payton back in 2014. So uh, a little bit more about Brock Morris here. Comes to Oklahoma after one season at Ole Miss, and in his time at Ole Miss, helped the Rebs land the number 12 class in the 2022 cycle. That's per ESPN. And then uh, another top 25 class in 2023. And, oh, by the way, before that time, that one-year stint in Oxford, three seasons at Louisiana where he was an assistant coach there, and he helped Louisiana land its highest-ranked recruiting class in program history. And uh, also during that stint in Lafayette, uh, they signed – Two ESPN, uh, UL did, two ESPN four-star prospects, one ESPN 100 recruit, three ESPN 100 transfers, a JUCO All-American, and a McDonald's All-American. So what does that tell us about Mr. Brock Morris? Well, tells us that uh, he's experienced in the SEC, right, coaching as an assistant in the SEC. And, oh, by the way, the track record to bring in top talent Obviously, he's uh, regarded as a very, very good recruiter. Didn't really run down some of the other assistant coaching nuggets for him, but uh, I know that if you go and keep digging into, again, the Morris file, you'll find out that uh, he's been sort of a defensive architect at times throughout his career and really helped uh, put together some really good scoring defenses in college basketball and three-point defenses in college basketball. So looks like a nice addition just uh, on the service for Oklahoma and somebody that – does have some SEC ties now with the uh, or southeastern ties, given the time uh, at Ole Miss and the time at Louisiana, and oh by the way, just the recruiting prowess in general. So it's going to be interesting to see how all of this comes together for Oklahoma. Remember another big time uh, transfer portal offseason for OU with Jalen Moore from Georgia Tech, uh, Darthard coming over to Oklahoma. Rivaldo Soares, Oregon to Oklahoma. Hughley, somebody uh, big that came over from Pittsburgh to Oklahoma. Javion Collum, the uh, big addition from Siena, the uh, combo guard to Oklahoma. And then, of course, Caden Cooper and Jacob Cole in this signing class for OU. So sort of the, the one constant for Porter Moser in Oklahoma has been nothing's constant during his tenure at OU. Really hoping it works out for him. I like Porter Moser a lot. I think he's one of the good guys in college basketball. I love his energy. is infectious. Uh, if nothing else, he's been very, very entertaining to watch. Roam the sidelines in the Lloyd Noble Center and beyond in the Big 12 Conference, and we're hoping soon to be in the SEC. But 
There's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is a make-or-break year for Porter Moser and a make-or-break year for Oklahoma. So it'll be interesting to see how all of that shakes out and obviously what Brock Morris, uh, what his addition, how that factors into everything for Oklahoma. That's going to do it for me in this edition of Locked On Sooners. We're inching closer to uh, my good buddy John Williams being back with us here on Locked On Sooners. We've got the live show uh, coming up tomorrow night, so you'll want to join us 9 p.m. Central Time for the live show right here uh, on YouTube. And then uh, obviously we'll have the podcast for you anywhere you get your podcast immediately after we finish it up. But you'll you'll want to join in, send your questions to the YouTube channel, topics that you want me to dive into. Again, uh, it's just the Josh Helmer show tomorrow, I think, unless something changes with John, uh, with, with him on vacation. He's harder in vacation. He should be enjoying it, and uh, he should not be a part of the live show tomorrow. But we got that going on at 9 o'clock, or I've got that going on tomorrow at 9 o'clock. And uh, send your questions in. You can find me on social media there at Josh on Ref. You can uh, tweet the account. Everybody should be following at Locked On Sooners or right here in the the YouTube comment section as well. What do you want to dive into? Bunches happened uh, in the world of Oklahoma football. You know, recruiting nuggets, commitments that uh, we've touched on recently. That's all fair game. We can dive back into that and more right here on Locked On Sooners. Until next time, Boomer Sooner, everybody. <laughs>